uh, we're going to start with the main program. Um, how many of you are either building a company, fundraising, uh, have started a company, have raised money? How many of you are at that stage? Okay. Uh, so you will soon discover that uh, you'll be spending a big chunk of your time fundraising, and then the other chunk you'll be spending uh, recruiting, because fundamentally it's broken, uh, and you're fundraising to recruit, to build, to fundraise, to recruit, and it's a never-ending story. So uh, I have done a lot of recruiting in, in various roles, and I've always thought that this process is broken, and so Amon... Uh, and the guys at Triple Byte are, are trying to solve that problem. Uh, they've raised a bunch of money and so a bunch of traction. So come on up. I want to welcome you. And thank you. Awesome. Let's see. Yeah. So uh, my name's Amin, and I'm one of the co-founders of Triple Byte. And we are a hiring marketplace uh, used by engineers to get jobs at tech companies. Um, and today I'm going to talk about, yeah, how to hire your first 10 engineers at a startup. So, you know, first of all, I want to point out that hiring is absolutely critical. Um, it's probably the single most important thing that you have to get right in order to build a successful company. Um, and it's, it's challenging, right? Hiring is fundamentally about people. You have to, you have to find people. You have to evaluate people's potential. You have to convince people to you know, believe in you and join your company. And yeah, people are not, not simple, right? So challenging can go wrong in, in all kinds of ways. Um, you, might, you might fail to, to find anybody who, who wants to apply to your, to your startup. Um, your interview might, might be biased. It might measure the wrong skills. Um, you might invest weeks of work in a candidate only to have them you know, take an offer at a different company. And so today I'm going to talk about uh, ways to avoid those problems. Uh, so first question before I jump in is, you know, why should you trust me about any of this? And, you know, one answer is that I've done a lot of interviews. <laughs> um, at Trillbyte, we do a full interview with every candidate who applies to our, to our, our platform. And I've done over a thousand of those interviews. But I think a, a better reason to trust me is the, the vantage point that Trillbyte has. Um, we have right now um, over 500 companies on our platform, and we work with over 300 candidates every week, and we get honest feedback from both the candidates and the companies. And so this gives us data on you know, what companies and what candidates actually want, and that data is the basis for, for most of the advice I'm going to give here today. Uh, yeah, so here's what I'm going to cover. I'm going to talk about how to source candidates, um, how to interview candidates, how to make hiring decisions, and then finally, how to make offers and, and close, you know, convince candidates to, to join your company. Um, yeah, and this is, this is a lot to cover in 20 minutes. Uh, so you guys are going to get the super condensed Cliff Notes version, and I'm going to try to focus on concrete points of advice that you guys can, can sort of apply to, to help you hire. Let's jump in. Uh, so first, uh, sourcing. I want to start with what not to do. And that's to you know, sit around and wait for people to email in their resumes to you or to reply to your careers page. Uh, these are called inbound applicants. And yeah, to be, to be kind of frank about it, inbound applicants tend to be bad. There's, there's significant selection bias in who, you know, who bothers to apply to companies online. That's especially true if you're a startup and don't have, you have a brand. Um, you know, this isn't, uh, this isn't universal, so by all means take a look at people who, who apply to your company, but inbound applicants are typically not a major source of candidates for any company, and they you know, almost certainly will not solve your sourcing problem. Uh, let's see, oh, yeah. So if you can't, you know, if, if waiting around for people to apply to you doesn't work, what, you know, what, what is it that you should do to source engineers? And I think the most important single answer is that sourcing is about your brand. It's about having a, you know, a good answer to this question, right? Why should an engineer join your company? Um, and a point I want to make here is that answering this question is, it's very different than 
uh, you know, pitching, pitching investors, pitching VCs. A mistake that we see founders make is to try to reuse their investor pitch with candidates. And you know, this doesn't work, right? Candidates during your company don't care about you know, your CAC or the you know, lifetime value of a customer or you know, you know, what, your, what your total adjustable market is. What, what motivates candidates is the core mission of your company, the, the, you know, the problem you're solving, um, you know, whether they're going to have you know, smart coworkers they can learn from, um, things like that. So um, longer term, the way to solve the sourcing problem is to, to build a brand, right? to answer these questions and to build a brand, to, to get your name out there, to, to write blog posts, to get content on Hacker News. Um, and what I recommend thinking about there is what is something that your company knows that nobody else knows? What is the unique insight of your business? What data do you have that, that the world might find interesting? And another, another way to think about this is that you want to sort of exploit the niche that your company is in, and you, you shouldn't be worried about being kind of actually divisive to do that. So, you know, for example, if your company, um, if, you're, if you're using Haskell to, to, you know, as, your, as your main programming language, or if you believe strongly that you know, open plan offices are terrible and that you're gonna give every employee at your company a room with a door, then like, double down on this, right? Blog about it. Build a brand about your position on these issues. So, um, you know, long term, the way to get better at sourcing is to build a brand. Um, but you know, short term, what do you do? And I think the best advice there is that you have to find people who already have some reason to want to join your company. And I think the best place to start there is actually with your, your friends and family, your network. Um, and this, you know, hiring from your network, this is how most startups hire you know, their entire initial team. Um, some advice here. So where I see founders fail at this is by you know, treating their, their friends, treating their network like friends and not like, like sales leads. Um, and this is actually a mistake, right? If you, you are, when talking to your friend, you're, you're gonna be much less willing to really pitch, to really double down, to really try to convince them. And yeah, that's an error. Like you have to figure out how to sell effectively to your network and, and get everyone in your company involved in it. And so the process that I recommend is, is this, right? Just sit down one-on-one -on -one with every member and every employee at your company and you know, go through with them you know, their, 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 all their LinkedIn connections, go through all their Facebook friends, create a spreadsheet, and just add every engineer that has any connection to anybody at your company. And once you've finished this with every employee at your company, you know, take that spreadsheet and treat it exactly the same way you would treat any other list of high-value sales leads, right? Just craft a message to every one of those people, right? Send, send super engaging emails, you know, follow up, keep engaging with every candidate in that list until you get either a yes or a clear no from each of those people. And then repeat this process every few months, um, and definitely with every new employee who joins your company. Okay, outbound sourcing. Um, this is kind of the classic technique where recruiters send you know, hundreds of emails, hundreds of LinkedIn messages to strangers. And this is actually the typical way that big companies source most of their candidates. Um, but it tends not to work for startups. And it tends not to work because until you've built a brand, you're gonna have an extremely low response rate. And so what I recommend to startups is first ignore this until after you've at least temporarily exhausted sourcing from your network. Right? Sourcing from the network is better, do that first. After you've exhausted your network, um, you can make this work, but you have to work harder than big companies. So you, you have to find you know, a group of people who are already passionate about some aspect of your company, you know, about the space you're in, about your mission. And then once you've found those people, you have to craft much more detailed messages. So I would budget between 10 to, to 20 minutes per message you send and actually investigate each candidate. You know, read their blog, you know, look at things they've written, you know, look at their open source contributions, and then write them actually fairly detailed email messages, pitching them specifically and, and, and mentioning your invest, you know, things, you, you know, things that you like about their background. Um, yeah, that's my final point here about sourcing. Uh, this is a pet peeve of mine. Most job descriptions um, are just completely rubbish. Um, people write job descriptions in this kind of dispassionate academic list of requirements, totally boring language. 
And this just completely misses the fact that a job description is fundamentally a pitch. It's fundamentally marketing material, right? It should be about, it should be exciting. It should be about why this, why this is an exciting role and why this candidate, what this candidate could work on at your company which would be fun and exciting. And the, the good news here is that if you actually put effort into writing your job descriptions and making them compelling and, and exciting, you will already have a way to kind of stand, you know, stand out among, among almost all of other companies out there. I really don't understand why most companies write such bad job descriptions. Okay, uh, on to the second point, um, how to interview. So the core challenge of interviewing is inconsistency. It's noise in the interview process. And by this I mean sort of you know, to what extent are interview results predictable, right? So if you had to re-interview all of your current coworkers um, or you know, people you've worked with in the past, right, what portion of those folks would pass the interview a second time? And uh, we've actually been able to get some data on this at TripleByte. Uh, so I calculated a stat called the inter-rater reliability between all of the interviewers and all of the companies on our platform. And you know, this is a measure of to what extent they tend to agree about which engineers are good and which engineers are bad. And it's on this range of zero to one, where zero means no agreement, and one is, is perfect agreement. And what I got was a number uh, just over 0 0.1. So you know, first of all, that number is clearly uh, much closer to the zero than to the one. Uh, but, but to give it more context, I calculated the same stat looking at a data set of, um, of online movie reviews. And what I got was actually a very similar number. So the context here is that, you know, hiring managers and interviewers agree about which candidates are best at about the same rate that Netflix viewers agree about which movies are best. Um, yeah, which is, it's not a lot of agreement, right? Interviewers are fundamentally, interviews rather, are fundamentally noisy. Um, and I think reducing this noise is, is the core challenge in designing an interview process. And so I'm going to go over some, some tips for how you can make your interviews less noisy. Um, uh, my first most important tip is to use structured interviews. And what I mean by this is mostly just go through the process of thinking about up front what skills matter for your company, right? Would you rather hire someone who's very fast, very productive, but makes some mistakes, or someone who's you know, slower but careful and always tests all their code? Right? It, like, is it important for you that people you hire are strong in academic computer science? And then once you've answered these questions, you can design sort of interview segments that measure those skills. Uh, the topic of structured interviews is, it's much deeper than this. So, you know, there's a lot to go into. You can sort of hire psychometricians and try to design an optimally predictive process. Um, that's more or less what my company focuses on. Um, but I think the key takeaway for startups is mostly the exercise of thinking through what matters, and making sure that your interview is roughly measuring those areas. And that's, that's also a great way to reduce bias in interviews, um, as in you know, sexism, racism, literally things you absolutely don't want involved in your interview process. Um, what the research on that shows is that bias tends to creep into interviews when the interviewers are told to make big, high-level decisions. Is this person somebody we want to hire? And that there's less bias when the interviewers are given more concrete axes to evaluate. And so by just planting in your own mind what matters is these skills, that's a way to reduce bias and make better decisions. Um, okay, second point here, um, some tips to, to, for better interview questions. So you want to avoid questions that require a leap of insight from the candidate. Uh, so you want there to be more than just a single hard problem they have to solve. And so an example of a bad interview question is, you know, you could tell a candidate, imagine you've been given an unstored list of integers, you know, what's a linear time algorithm to find the, you know, k of the smallest element in that list for some integer, some value k. Um, you know, the, the solution to this problem is an algorithm called quick select, and if the candidate knows that, they're gonna answer the question very quickly and very well. Uh, but if they don't know that, right, they're gonna have to basically invent quick select during the interview, and that requires a real leap of insight. Most people are gonna fail at that. And so a much better way to actually phrase basically the same interview question is to say, you know, hey candidate, here's a two-page write-up of an algorithm called Quick Select. Please read it, spend 10 minutes on it, and then you know, spend the next 40 minutes implementing this in your favorite language. In that case, you're getting much more signal. You're seeing, can this candidate take this idea and render that into working code? 
Uh, yeah, you also want to avoid specialized knowledge. So you know, assuming you, that you're not trying to measure knowledge of more advanced data structures in your interview, you should try to limit your questions to operations on, you know, on strings, on arrays, and not more complicated you know, prefix trees or red-black trees or anything like that. I'm gonna skip this. Um, okay, uh, final point here. Um, you wanna have a diverse interview team. So, you know, the interviewers bring their own background and experience, and you will, you, you know, you get a more accurate signal if you have a diversity of backgrounds and experiences, you know, among the people who are evaluating the candidate. And um, a, a point here for startups is that, you know, if, if, if you're just you, or if you're, you know, you and your co-founder, obviously, you are who you are, you can't change that. Um, a thing you can do is actually bring in friends, bring in outsiders, and have the initial interview panel for your employees be more than just you. Okay, on to the final point, um, how to close engineers. So, first of all, um, closing is, is important. Um, uh, and that, that's probably fairly obvious to you, uh, but uh, yeah, I, I wanna just talk about how important it is. So, this, this is a conversion funnel. Um, this is actually a very optimistic conversion funnel, by the way. This is kind of the best case estimates of conversion rates for a startup. You can see we had about, you know, we, we, we reached out to 300 candidates, 60 replied, you know, we did a, probably an hour long phone screen with you know, 30 of them. We did probably a six hour interview with 10 of them, we made two offers and we closed one candidate. And to just think about what this would look like if we hadn't closed that one candidate at the end, if that candidate had decided to go work at Google, right? We would have, all of these hours of work would have been for nothing. And so it is, you know, closing candidates at the end of this funnel is just an extremely important, extremely leveraged thing to do. So how do you do it? Well. I think the most important insight here is that you know, closing starts early. So closing candidates is about more than just the phone call you have with the candidate after you make them an offer. It's about the entire process. And in fact, uh, we see at TripleByte that candidates tend to be more impacted by the perception of a company during the interview. So I think making the interview itself positive is actually one of the most important things you can do to close candidates. And so um, some advice there. Um, one thing I recommend is actually having all the interviewers get together before the candidate arri arrives and just talk about the candidate. What's their background? How do you pronounce their name? What do we know about them? What are they looking for, right? And communicating to the interviewers that their job is, you know, it's 50% to evaluate, but it's 50% to sell the candidate, right? To answer their questions and provide a positive experience. Um, I think it's good to include a demo session in interviews. So like a four, like half an hour, purely to, to sell the candidate, where they meet with some engineers and they, you get to look at cool unreleased features, the current problems you're working on, kind of a behind the scenes look at your company. Um, yeah, and then finally, uh, so I mentioned diverse interviewers in the context of accuracy, uh, but it's also important for closing candidates. Um, and this is especially true for candidates from underrepresented groups. Um, we've done some surveys here, and simply seeing that people from different backgrounds can be successful in the company is especially important in closing those candidates. And the best way to do that is just to include people you know, of diverse backgrounds on the interview panel. Uh, speed is your weapon. Uh, this is a place where startups can, can, can have an advantage over big companies. So big companies take weeks, sometimes, Google takes sometimes over a month to make an offer to a candidate. If you can make that offer like same day or next day, um, that's a big advantage. Uh, it's okay to, to call in backup to close a candidate. And so your first few hires are critical to your company. And so in get, you know, get your investors involved. Have them meet with the candidate. Um, have your entire team email the candidate, even if they didn't you know, interview them. Um, and the thing that we did early, actually, was have the hiring manager and one of our founders fly out and meet the candidate afterward for lunch. So at the keynote, we were hiring someone from Vancouver. We have our, the hiring manager and the CEO show up on an airplane and get lunch with them. You know, that's not something that Google can do. Um, and uh, your final point here is, it's like a, lot, a little like a trick is that you can, you can pretend the candidate already accepted. And so when talking to them, you know, use, use the future tense, not the conditional. Say, you know, you know when you join the company, your, your, your role will be X, not, you know, were you to join, your role would be X. Um, you know, invite them to events, and not, not, maybe not even just like, not, you know, fancy events. Invite, invite them to, the, to, to, to your team all hands, right? Pretend they're already employed and include them on emails. Get to, get to give them a look kind of under the hood at the company. Get that? Yeah, um, I think that's, uh, that's most of my advice. 
Um, I've got one minute left, and I, I want to actually spend that um, talking a bit about, about Triplebyte. Uh, so, um, my company, Triplebyte, um, we, we, we help companies um, hire, and we'd, we'd love to work with any of you. Uh, we actually, uh, the, the, the startups, Cruise and Flexport, both hired over half of their initial uh, 10 engineers through our platform. And a bit about how we work. So our mission is background blind assessment. Um, so you know, engineers apply to us from a diverse set of backgrounds. Uh, we do a full interview without looking at their resume. And then if they pass that interview, we match them with companies. And according to our data, only about 20% of skilled programmers in the United States have sort of conventionally strong resumes. And so our mission is to help you hire from sort of that other 80%. And uh, this also ends up uh, helping you hire very quickly. Um, so because we have this big pool of talent waiting to go, um, startups are able to hire on our platform much faster than, than through their own process. So this graph actually comes from one of our clients, Box. Um, they actually created this graph, this is a study they did. And their, via their regular process, it took them an average of about 75 days to hire a candidate. And through our process, they're able to hire in an average of, uh, of uh, 35 days, so less than half the time. So yeah, um, love to work with any of you, and we're actually offering a special discount uh, to attendees of Startup Conference. Um, if you create an account in the next week, uh, we'll give you 20% off of your first hire. Yeah, um, that's it. I'd love your thoughts. I'm um, sorry, I, I didn't have time for Q&A, but come find me afterward, uh, email me, I'd love to talk to, to all of you. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you.